Welcome to the Weekly Hijack. Hello, everyone. Tonight we've got SOS. SOS. Save our ship. Yes. Um, save our skins. Other, I can't think of any other one. Um, Salt our sausages. <laughs> <laughs> That's a weird meaning for loss. I think, <laughs> but anything can happen. Yeah, yeah. Well, this episode we were reminded uh, how Lost has an embarrassment of riches when it comes to characters. Yes, because Rose and Bernard are not necessarily the first people to be like, yeah, let's do an episode about him. But I'm sure glad they did. Um, but yeah. But I mean, just even like you said at one point, this is sort of a, an episode of all the, or maybe Natasha said, yeah. an episode of, with all the extras, all the other characters. Yeah. It's almost a shame sometimes we have to spend. I mean, I love Jack and yeah. Sawyer and Kate and all that lot good stuff, but they overshadow some of the mm. supporting cast yeah. sometimes, and so you kind of even forget characters like Anna Lucia or the Echo I are know, still around. Yeah, the second half of the season, and again, we took a long break and a rewatch too, but some of these characters got pushed after Henry Gale showed up. Yeah, they got pushed back quite a bit. Quite yeah, push back to the side and so so this like episode. Oh yeah, remember Anne Lucia? You better yeah. and for the next episode. And remember Livy and Hurley or thing? Well, they did that last, last episode. Too, yeah, that, that that hasn't been quite as long ago. But and I mean, there was this guy named Frogert. And <laughs> I mean, these are there's a lot of characters here that like were very important at one time, and then he, they got completely overshadowed by Hatch and Henry Gale yeah. dealings. Juggling the characters in Lost has always been. Very complicated, and they do a, they do a pretty good job most times. Yeah, but sometimes it does become the Jack Locke show. Yeah, <laughs> and then you start like, oh yeah, and then there's this person and this person. Oh yeah, they're building a church, and that oh yeah, Charlie. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So it's it's an unfortunate in a perfect alternate. I'd love to see an alternate universe where. You know, at this point, a lot of the survivors are are kind of getting used to their island yeah. home, and I would love to see like an alternate version of the show where it was just about them living on the <laughs> island, and there actually were no others and no weird <laughs> mysteries. And every now and then, I think that would be an interesting like alternate world version, of like it. an episode or two, like a small yeah. collection of stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. and occasionally they do like season three has got one or two that yeah. are kind of, kind of, kind of feel tried that to. way. Yeah, well, that, but, that's the nice thing about this episode was Bernard and Rose. You know, he's like, why aren't we trying to get off the island? And you. Which is a question that I think some people watching the show probably had. Like, like after the wrap, they completely forgot about it for quite a while. I mean, it hasn't actually been that long, I think, day-wise. In island time, no. It, yeah. Probably not. Well, plus it's just nice because, you like, that last kind of montage, a lot of them are kind of, you know... Li- I mean, there is a sense of... It's interesting. Bernard's always trying to do something. Rose is always like, just let it go. And I'm like... And Rose has always kind of been the, the, the voice of... Just simple belief in the island, the the like mm-hmm. what Locke could have been. Well, and it's interesting if you think about Ed's. You know, this is their only their only centric episode. Yeah, in a sense, they learned the lesson of the island of in one know, episode. But yeah, in one episode, <laughs> but just let it be, and so that, and they managed to just kind of live out their Zen island life for the rest of the show. They stay there the whole time. Yeah, I mean, they jump through time. They don't care. I mean, they just have a house. <laughs> they and... hide from like all the other crazy I others mean, and Dharma people. And they show up sometimes, like. Season six, don't they? And just kind of like give Jack a talking to about like, <laughs> what are you doing? What's More interesting in the in the flesh sideways when you watch carefully, they seem to know they're in all where they are. Oh, really? Yeah, Rose and Bernard seem to. Have, they seem like yeah, we know what's going on here <laughs> because they, they are, they're in tune. Uh huh. Yeah. With this thing, so I mean, and really, props to Bernard for the very end. You know, a lot of the episode, he's the the stubborn. Like as much as as many of the other guys in the show yeah. can be, the stubborn. I'm gonna go do this my way. But then as, as soon as Rose r- lays out what's up, he's on board with it. Yeah. Her. So kudos for sticking by your gal. Bernard. I mean, and they're just. <laughs> They are kind of the, they are kind of the every man. Yes. I mean, they just, they just, watching an episode like this, you feel like, oh, these are just normal people, largely. Right. There's nothing really crazy about them. They don't have the Shakespearean drama that uh, some of your other characters yeah. have. And it's interesting, you do have a little bit of the whole, like, oh, this place in Australia has a special sense of energy, spe- energy which you know, we hear energy. Tunisia has one of those. And, oh, yeah. You know, there's, you know, there is island magic. Connected, they have alternate. I don't know what you call them. Places in the world mm-hmm. where the mag, you know, he even drops the magnetic idea. Yeah, you know. So uh, very subtle, uh, yeah, world building right there. But it works. It works nicely. I guess the side. Pl- it is interesting. This is, you know, the first of many 
I don't know the first, well, at least the next of many lock doubtings and then being built back up. Yeah. And I like that. He, he really did just need to get out of the hatch for a while. He's so, obs- I mean, he just, the thing with Locke is when he, he's just so intensely focused on whatever he's doing at the moment. Yeah. But I mean, you, this s- was Jack. <laughs> you saw that same, when he was pounding on the door, trying to get Ben to respond to him, it's the same sort of need for validation yeah. that, that Locke perennially will, will demonstrate. Well, I like it because. The same question we had like last episode, did, did Ben really press the button? You know, <laughs> we, we don't know. And, yeah. and I love the fact that Ben smile. I mean, it gives you the sense that he knows by telling him he didn't press it, he caused massive amounts of chaos for Locke. Yeah. yeah. And mm-hmm. really, honestly, he probably did press it. Probably. I'm, I'm leaning toward that. Next week out of this episode, but yeah, you know, that story, you know, he, he's always playing the angles of how can get under people's skin and. Man, he plays lock. Plays oh, like a, like a oh, fiddle. Man. Usually like a fiddle. Yeah. There's very there's very few cases where lock gets the better of Ben. I mean it happens once in a while, but, but I mean, till the very horrible end between yeah. those two. <laughs> but um any other well, I guess Natasha is part of it. I missed the last part of the episode. I had to say, you know, we were we were like we like kinda of like, oh but Rose and Bernard are such a nice little couple and then we always say that about Sun and Jen. I don't really say that about Jack and Kate. You know, they always try to push that. And I think it's just because, I, it's just interesting, you know, the kind of the rule of thumb for things are like triangles and stuff. But mm-hmm. all the non-triangles seem to be a lot more like, oh. <laughs> I don't know if that's something to learn or just something how it's written loss or just because of the sort of Kate's character. Well, you know, it's it's funny. I remember people having the same sort of aww feeling when we got to Sawyer and Juliet. After which, they were... Which came out of nowhere initially. Yeah. And they sold... I mean, I remember the writer saying that they're like, this is never going to work. And then... <laughs> and the, it, the, the it, actors weren't sure it was going to work, but then they... They, they sold they, it. They totally pulled it off. Yeah. And so maybe there's... Maybe Jack's the problem. <laughs> maybe, but the, the thing is, when does it become a stable thing? Yeah. As opposed to this... Like, like it's never, they're never quite settled. Yeah, I mean, the the, the the idea of drama is always the triangle, but at least for, I don't know, do you have, do you have this sort of like, these guys are men, and I think the problem with Jack and Sawyer and Kate is that you never really know what, which would be best. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You can argue it one way or the other. For and a, people a, do. <laughs> and people do. No, you, the only one that never felt genuine to me was Jack and Juliet. That yeah. Was, that was like a summer crush fling thing. That was it, like a recovery after Yeah. A bounce I, back sort of deal. Yeah. And I think well I'll have to see when we watch it again, but I think it was both partly feel like that. But it did also just feel like yeah, this is weird. Yeah, it's like you're trying to you're trying you're just you're trying playing to soap opera y yeah. love angles. Yeah. But I guess that's I that. think that's that for SOS. Okay. SOS. All right. So on to the next one? Yep. We're back. Yes, with two for the road. Uh, this is a rough episode. Yeah, it's hmm. it's 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 a hard one to watch on a rewatch because when I watched season two the first time, I was well into. I'd already seen a lot of other stuff, yeah. and I was basically playing catch up. Yeah, so I knew Anna Lucia, and I kind of guessed Libby died. I think I don't think I had any idea, and it's. It's a very shocking finale. Yeah. On a rewatch, it all feels very much like it's all leading toward it. And I mean, which on one end shows that it was built up well. But yeah, first time you watch it, you're just like, what? Yeah. But then you watch it this time, you're like... It, yeah, the signs I mean, are there. I mean... Fr- from the set, from the first scene where it's like, Jack's going to go out and try to figure out who dropped Mike off. And Kate's like, no, he just came by himself, you know? Yeah. Yeah, There's there's a lot of... With Saeed even mentioning, oh, yeah, I took Shannon to, I know, to, I know. on the picnic thing. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> now, is it true this is the last and second Anna Lucia flashback? Yeah. And she just a, she's just a sad character. I mean, she is. She just. It, it's funny. It struck me this time how much longer she stayed in Sydney, apparently, after leaving Jack's dad. Yeah. <laughs> because, like, it took. Jack a while to come back, all the way yeah. down to Australia to come get his dad and do all that. And it's interesting to pair her with Jack's dad because Jack's dad, Tim was mentioning during the when we're watching it that for a long time people were thinking he was the key to everything mm-hmm. because he shows up and connected so many people. And even in the finale, he's kind of the 
the symbol for com- you know completeness or you know he's the one yeah. who explains to Jack and everything. And in some ways, you know, Jack's dad's like the quintessential person who made a mistake and just couldn't fix it. And he knew exactly what he needed. But he to just do he would have refused completely. You know, and, you know, mm-hmm. if you, an island morality or whatever. You know, there's a sense of realizing he did something, then letting go. Yeah, and in some ways, at least, and Lucia gets to that point, into a certain extent. And you, it, it's interesting. Her island journey, she is kind of, is kind of reliving her her off island issues and yeah. going through the same process of hurt, betrayal, then retribution, and then her, and then eventually slowly coming to realize she can't yeah. be that. It's not sustainable. Now, what do you think? And I've never made heads or tails of this. The others all like, you're a good person. You're not a good person. I mean, is that just something they just throw around like you're out, you're not one of us sort of thing? Or is there some actual like Jacob thing there? There might be some. It's hard to tell. It's just what anything Ben says. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. But Goodwin also talked about you're one of the good ones, or I'm trying to argue that you are. mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's I don't we don't really know how many of them knew about Jacob's candidate list. Yeah, um, and I'd be curious. I don't remember. I'd have to go look up on Lostpedia if he was on if her name was on one of his lists. It could be. Yeah, that's um, true. As a potential candidate, maybe she wasn't because you know there's a lot of reasons she wouldn't be for one. Right, <laughs> Him, murder and. You know, leaving a guy to get drunk for well, I mean, she didn't, she didn't really have that much responsibilities no. for no. Jack's dad. In long Which I guess was just mentioned here. One of the first big connection to lead into Claire being yes. Jack's sister. Yes, that's true. I I wonder why it was is it interesting. I guess they wanted some sort of explanation for why he chose to go to Australia. Yeah, and that was part of it. And the more they can connect things, of you know, the more it's just drama. And right. And Claire was always kind of a disconnected character anyway. So yeah. So I guess that kind of makes some sense in a roundabout way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's the first mention of it. Oh man, Ben plays Luke Locke at the beginning, but like I came for you, Locke. I'm on the way here for you. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly the sort of thing to say to get under Locke's. Yeah, get past Locke's defenses. Well, and I think there is a certain amount of. I mean, we, I think we're losing. Learn scene three. Ben does have a certain fascination with Locke because he wasn't supposed to be able to walk, and then he was healed. Mm, and yeah. Locke's and Ben's not being healed, and so he's like. What's up with the island? Yeah, why is he healing you, yeah. not me? So he yeah. might he might actually come partly. It might be half true. That's yeah. That's I just don't remember that. I, I hadn't forgotten. That's a good. That's a very good point. It is always interesting, of course. Even b- b- besides the "you're not a good person" thing, there's still that whole you know justification. Well, I mean, maybe, I guess it's part two. Ben had a very rare moment of succumbing to rage here. Yeah. When he attacked Anna, I mean, this yeah. wasn't any like anything he had done in the hatch before. Probably after you know a week of being kept in <laughs> confinement. And he, like that. I mean, he does have a concern for his people. Yes, I mean, just like Jack has a concern for his people. I mean, there's very much set up this like we are the true believers, yeah, <laughs> sort of thing, and you're intruders, right? I mean, the, the, and the island people are especially like that. Mm-hmm. And then you know, even as you're watching this time, it's just inter- you know little things like. Mike was talking about, yeah, they're just simple and they're on barefoot. And, and Kate does her little like double take because she's like, oh, I've seen costumes and stuff. Is Yeah. You know, is is that real or is it not? You know, at this point, we don't really know what to make of that. I mean, mm-hmm. as, a, as a viewer. Well, you would think, considering. I, oh, yeah, I guess we've seen the whole med. We've seen all yeah, Claire's Yeah, you would back, think, considering true. Claire knew about all that, she might speak up. But, you know, it's kind of one of those things they don't have time for. And. Michael doesn't have the full picture. Maybe Kate realizes that. Because, I mean, the other did have... I do remember when... The, it's just some point, they sh- I think they show flashbacks of him, and they actually were in, like, some kind of... Tense and stuff. So that's a half-truth. With the Madam question, or whatever her name is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and honestly, Jack's always gung-ho to go against the other... He likes to discount them as, you know, as much as possible. Yeah. But he... He should have thought through, wait, I gave them all the guns we had earlier. So they ha- obviously have more than just two, like Michael, oh, yeah. like Michael was saying they did. Yeah. And, and I think if, if certain things had happened, Kate might have been like, hey, guys. Let's think about this. Because I think she's just, you know how she does. She'll just keep things in the back of the mind and then go rogue on her own later or something. <laughs> yeah. So. Pretty much. 
Jack is much like Locke in that sense. You know, that once you get an idea in his head, he'll go for it and he'll like go demand guns from Sawyer. To, you know, I mean, they're very despite similar. Despite the consequences yeah. and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So we got rid of a lot of tail enders so far. <laughs> only Echo and Bernard are left, yep. and pretty soon it'll only be Bernard. Yep. It's only a matter of time. Yeah, tail enders, you were short for this show. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, you know, as much as analysis is annoying to m- many people, I think her, I think her flashbacks have an interesting perspective someone she's really on the on the scale of people who understand they're are working through their problems she's really on the dark end of things yeah like she can't quite get out you know the only other main character like that is kind of saeed yeah in some ways of this the spiral that you're having i mean they all have spirals they can't get out of yeah. her seems to be particularly it's just brutal it's just short. funny funny because saeed was normally more level-headed than like almost anyone else yeah. even even though he was also in his own spiral um, he's very he's very bipolar in some ways. I mean, he's yeah. level-handed, but like if he dips into this one particular at l- corner of his life, yeah, yeah, no, that's very true. Bipolar that's a that's a good expression of it. Yeah, messy, uncomfortable episode yep. in in a lot of ways. Not like in a bad, uncomfortable. You, I don't know. It's just yeah, <laughs> it's two for the road. That's that's kind of what. What this I, if I remember this is one of those shows that really helped Lost with the reputation of anyone could die. Yes, <laughs> if you the Libby thing, that's just horrible. I mean, the Anne Lucia thing's shocking, and then he turns around, he's scared too, and just she just happens to be there and shoots Libby, and he's just like, oh, you know, my you can read it all over Michael's face that he doesn't want to do any of this, but yeah, he's going to get his boy. Yeah, come hell or high water. Yeah. And honestly, Jack would probably do the same thing. <laughs> the funny, the funny thing is, though, at the end of the day, I think probably uh, in terms of like least liked characters, I think Michael might have won out over some people. Yeah, it depend. It might depend on who you ask. Because I mean, Michael got the shaft on a lot of things, but man, did he mess up here? And, yeah, and he never. He he basically had to redeem it with his life. Yeah, yeah, so. exactly. All right. So that's the end of this cheery episode. Yeah, it's exciting <laughs> stuff. So I guess... Uh, One more disc. We've just finished another disc. Dun, dun, dun. So season two, we will put you to bed before too long. Yes. All right. So thanks for listening. Uh, feel free to leave us a review on iTunes. Uh, yeah. And visit us at dearoldtrainthethought.blogspot.com. Until next time, this is Tim. This is Nick. Bye-bye.